Fiverr ended up on. Was that uh, Stargate SG-1? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I know somebody that watched Stargate SG-1 simply because MacGyver was on it. <laughs> and, and yeah, I do well, know they he... Make, he had a good screen presence, and I have seen the newer yeah. MacGyvers. It's a pretty cool show, but I can't think of it as MacGyver because it had a completely different feel to it. Yeah, um, and and they they did joke a bunch about MacGyver. Like, I'm pretty certain they have one specific line in there where, "Can you MacGyver that or something?" Yeah, it was actually in the first episode. Uh, they were they were looking at the uh, device they used to dial the to get the date, gate to dial in. And mm. they were using all these supercomputers and stuff. And she's look she's looking at the alien tech there to operate the Stargate on the other end. She's like, we had to use so many massive computers and stuff to MacGyver something together that would do what this does. <laughs> I don't think they ever made another MacGyver reference since then, though, that, that I saw anyway. I never saw the whole series, but I, I watched quite a bit of it. I thought it was really cool. It was one of the best shows on TV at the time, in my opinion. They had one or two other ones, I think, but they were like more obscure references rather than specifically MacGyver. Like, I think he used like a paper clip in something or, or, you know, different things like that. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, though, the newer MacGyver shows, it was was pretty cool, but I just, I don't see it as MacGyver. It is just a little off for me. Same thing with the newer Magnum shows. I thought that was. That that was a cool show, but I. But I don't. Newer Magnum show. Yeah, as much fun as the show is, I just don't see them as the Magnum characters. Their their personalities, their tone, their presence is very different. Yeah, Tom Selleck was just way too iconic. Yeah. In that, in that. um... Do Do they have the chopper at least? In In the new Magnum PI, do they Do they have at least the helicopter? Uh yes, hmm, okay. The yeah, he's got the chopper pilot. Higgins is a woman in this one. Oh God, yeah. Hmm. But believe it or not, she's actually likable. I mean, she does do the girl bossing here and there, and that's for sure. I mean, they gave her, they kind of gave her good reason for it. She was MI six, so she is well trained, and. To, to her credit, she is very fit, the actress who plays her. She is very mm-hmm. fit. She keeps herself in good shape. She looks like an athlete. But I still couldn't stand it when she went and just easily flipped some guy twice her size over her shoulder. I'm like, still, <laughs> no, no. That's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I could see her as a force to be reckoned with, but then they just have her toss a dude like she is a dude. It's like, no, that's not. It would be a little more finesse than that, I would think. The, the Kurt Russell uh, Stargate movie w- was really good. I love that. And the, the way that they um, uh, go from O'Neill from the movie to O'Neill in the TV show, I, I appreciated that. Yeah. It, and uh, what's his name who took James over James Spader's spot as Daniel? He, the first episode, yeah. he was almost identical to James yep. Spader's version. And then they like he got the haircut and and made him look more his own thing after that. But it was really neat how they were sticking to that source material as much as possible. They even had a few of the actors return to reprise their roles from the movie. Yeah, O'Neill with two L's. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the the um his his friend from the movie uh, was the one that that got infected and they ended up. Uh, and he was trying to escape through the Stargate, and and yeah, pretty sure that guy was actually from the movie. Uh, yeah, their their buddy. That's right. They they made friends with one guy in the movie, and then he ended up they uh, the Gaul possessed him. Yep. And didn't did they end up like recasting him later episodes or I can't remember. It's been years since I've seen any of it. Mm, I don't remember. They, I think they had him show up in later episodes as, as like uh, things that happened in the past or something. Perhaps. Because I, I think the ghoul that, that took him over was uh, part of um, some of the ghoul plans or something. I don't remember. It's, it's been a while. 
Now, I remember they did expand out that universe quite a bit, and they had uh, they had SG one, SG Story Atlantis, universe. and then SG universe. universe. I, think. I, I I never followed Atlantis and Universe. Well, wasn't there one other, or was that it? Um, there may have been something else, but I do know that there was a couple of direct uh, to DVD uh, movies to trying to uh, finish out Stargate SG One because they were starting to get into that religious uh, religious space group or whatever that was causing all kinds of problems, and they they had a resolution to that as as a direct to DVD thing. Kahuna asked, does anyone get old fantasy Robert E. Howard vibes from Stargate technology? Yeah, I, to a certain extent. Yeah. I do a little bit, uh, especially in the movie. I'm, I'm not entirely sure so much with SG-1 or SG Atlantis, but uh, in the movie, there's a lot of uh, tapping into uh, ancient history and old cultures uh, to try and expand on the uh, Stargates and the alien technology. And, uh, I mean, that's a pretty common route with what Robert E. Howard does with his writing. There's a lot of research into the ancient world, uh, very old history.